Approval matrix configuration. Approval matrices are designed to group both employees and approvers so that workflows can be configured for various module functionality within the PathLock products. Examples of these include compliant provisioning, user access certifications, role and risk certifications, elevated access management, etc. Now, as part of the administrative setup, we can see here where we can define our groups and perform that configuration. Now, as you define groups like users and approvers, you then map employees into those groups. Then as you define workflows for various tasks, for example, compliant provisioning, the approval matrices that you've defined and configured can be selected as needed within the workflows to route for the approvals your organization requires. Let's take a look at a common example, a request for additional authorizations. Frequently during compliant provisioning, we required approval from a line manager, which we can see here. And then if a risk occurs, we'll take an additional approval to be obtained from a risk owner. Now, once these approvals are gathered, the access is provisioned. Here we can see these steps defined as well as the approval group that's tied to the step. Another way to view this is in a visual flow chart. As we can see in this example here, the workflow requires the user and approval groups to be created for line managers and risk owners and to tie those employees to their line managers and risk owners for this workflow to be completed. Now that we've seen how these approval matrices are used in workflows, let's do a high level walkthrough of some examples of how to set up the approval groups and actually perform this configuration. So first we're gonna navigate to show the setup of user groups and then we'll go through approval groups. So within our admin menu path, we're going to expand our groups and then we're going to walk through each of these sub menu items in order to set up our necessary user groups. So first step would be user group type configuration. This is the first step where we define the types of user groups. Some examples we can see here are to group users by departments, line manager or direct manager. The data sheet icon that we see here will allow us to link to reference materials. The magnifying glass will take us to the change history for the line item. The share icon allows sharing of this line item and the comment bubble icon allows for additional adding of comments to the line item. Creating a new group consists of entering the name of the new group um, and the new group type. And similarly, we can edit an existing group, for example, account type by uh, clicking on the edit button and we can edit that name here. So once this is completed, we're gonna move on to user group configurations. So we'll navigate to the next step. This is where we further build out our user group types by breaking them out into all the smaller groupings that make up the type. For example, we've defined department as a user group type. Within the screen, we can now list out each of the departments like finance, IT, manufacturing, and more that fall into that department grouping. We can add additional description if preferred, and the person icon indicates the approval groups that have been tied to the user group. That's this icon here. For example, we've defined department as a group type, and we now um, can see that there are approval groups for risk owners, access reviewers, and access approvers all tied to this example finance user group. To configure additional groups, you'll select the new record button as previously shown, and to edit any existing configurations, you'd again click on that pencil icon that's next to the configuration you want to edit. Similarly, we still have the ability to link, share, comment, or view change logs all available here as well. So next up, we have the ability to create user group rules. We can select from the available user groups. Here, we'll select our finance users. Go ahead and click display. And then we can see if there are any rules already configured or if we want to configure new rules. An example of a rule would be the ability to select the dynamic values across various users, organizations, roles, et cetera, all those attributes that define the users we want to tie to this user group. Now, similarly, the ability to do user groups by organizational structure is going to allow us to directly associate our user groups with organizational units to again define the users tied to that selected group by this organizational unit attribute. 
User group content is where we can see the list of users that are now tied to our user groups. Finance, which we've used as a prior example, we can see here the list of the records of all of the users that have been tied to the finance group by the rules and groupings that we've defined. Now we can filter these by user group as well as um, the individual system, and that's listed here in the top right corner where it's a dropdown that we can select from. This report is helpful um, in that it can validate the expected users that we have based on the filters that we've listed so we can review our user group. And now if needed, we can additionally add a new record. So for example here, if I typed in an individual user, I can select them and I can add them directly to this user group to update it if I need to manually to make that user group reflect the exact selection of users that I expect. Next is user to groups. This is another way to show the same data, but by searching in the opposite direction. So here, for example, if I filtered for that same user and I go ahead and click display, it's going to provide me with a list of all groups that that particular user is present within. So this concludes our user group configuration review and review steps. We now have our users sorted into their applicable groups, which will be used in various product functionalities and workflows. And if we think back to the example workflow that we walked through, when a user is requesting access to be provisioned, we now have our finance users grouped appropriately and we can route them to their appro appropriate finance group approver. To do this, we next want to define the approval groups and assign the appropriate users into those approval groups. So again, we're gonna navigate to administration into our groups and this time we're going to expand approval groups and similarly we'll walk through these in order of the submenu items from top to bottom. So first we define our approval groups, their descriptions, when this group is applied and the approval type. So direct manager for example could be used in our provisioning workflow that we previously discussed. Again we have the same capabilities here to create, edit, add links, view, change logs, share and add comments to all the approval groups configured, just as we did with the user group configurations. And you'll notice here that the approvers column includes specific users. This is similar to what we saw in the user group setup where we continue to configure these groups and the data ties back to these initial screens. So here we see the approvers that have been set up in the next step. So to do this, we'll actually go to that next step, approval group content, and here we can tie those specific approvers to each of our approval groups. So in the example we were looking at for direct manager, we can see that we've created multiple line items with individual users tied into that direct manager group. And that links back to that approval group in the prior screen. Next, for approval group relations, we build the relationship between the approval groups we've defined and the user groups that these approvers oversee. For this example, we've selected our finance users user group, and we can see the three approver groups that are tied to the user group. So think back to when we reviewed the finance users user group um, at the beginning of this demonstration, and we saw that these three approval groups were listed, finance access reviewer, finance risk owner, and finance user access approval. This is where that configuration was completed to link the two together. Next, we have similar options again to create approval group rules. We can do this by group, for example, direct manager, and we can, if we have an existing rule, view that or add a new rule. And again, based on the attributes that we want to select within the system, it allows us to tie approval groups to approvers in a standardized manner. Approval group type gives us additional capabilities to add decision points for our approval groups. Like if we want um, to allow for disabling of approvals by a submitter, or if we need to, for example, create a custom approval resolution. Approval group import definition is exactly as it sounds. This is the ability for us to mass import to find approval group groups. By clicking on new record, we can define the workflow 
that we want to use for importing definitions and how the approval and user groups will tie together. And lastly, we have the ability to import organizational structure. This screen is used to create the workflow infrastructure based on the organizational structure. So this creates the user groups, approval groups, and the group relations configurations all in one. And it's completed by performing steps two and three in this screen to select the relevant organizational units and then to actually perform the import. So with the completion of this, we have completed our setup of our user groups and our approval groups. And if we were to return to the workflows, we now have configured our groups to tie into our workflows and successfully route for approvals. This concludes our overview of the approval matrix configurations. Thank you.